Tennessee Wildcast is live on the air with the latest on hunting, fishing, boating, and all things outdoors. Make welcome your host, drummer and outdoor expert novice, Jason Harmon. All right, hello everybody and welcome to this edition of Tennessee Wildcast. I'm glad you're tuning in. Thanks for watching on Facebook and uh, we're excited about today's show. Today we're talking about boating, and I've got Mr. Don King helping me co-host today. How are you doing, Don? Good, Jason. Thanks for inviting me, and uh, hey, a lot of good info for boaters out here today. Yeah, I'm excited about what we're going to talk about. Um, there's a lot going on in the world of boating, even though it's hunting season. Uh, the boating's still happening, and um, it's slowing down a little bit, but there'll be uh, folks out trying to get to their duck hole or oh, yeah. their favorite deer spot that's only accessible by water sometimes. and. Uh, that's so we'll right. Talk about some of that and uh, just uh, boating in general. So I'm going to pan out here and, and introduce our guest, uh, Mr. Josh Landrum, as our District 21 boating officer. How are you doing, Josh? Ah, doing good. Enjoying Glad. the cool weather. Yeah, it's cooling <laughs> off and uh, about time to get out there and do some deer hunting, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Josh is District uh, 21 boating officer and he's uh, been with us for quite a while. Josh, how long have you been with the agency? I've been with TWRA since 2011. 2011, so about seven or going on eight years now. And uh, you've always been in boating, or what's, what's your role I been? I started out in Houston County as the Houston County Wildlife Officer, and then I transferred into Davidson County as the Davidson County Wildlife Officer. Okay. And I've been in the boating division, in the boating position for about four years now. So what's your uh, favorite part about being with the agency? Was it the boating side of things? or are you? Oh, yeah. That's why I got into this job. In the first place, I'm a big bass fisherman, and I love being on the water. And the boating position is the position I will be in for the as, remainder of my career. As probably. long as they'll have you, yep. that's great. I, I love being on the water. That's, that's awesome. That's great. So, um, you said you love bass fishing. So who got you? Who introduced you into that kind of that sport? Uh, bass fishing. My dad. Uh, I grew up down in Chattanooga in Soddy Daisy, Tennessee, and uh, my dad was always big into fishing and. We fished, I grew up fishing Chickamauga, so mm -hmm. uh, that's pretty much, you know, w when I realized I wanted a job in the outdoors. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. There's some big fish on Chickamauga. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We've got the uh, state record uh, largemouth there. And, oh, uh, man. And, and and speaking of jobs in the outdoors, I got I to gotta pat you on the back, Josh. I, I saw leading up to Memorial Day and Fourth of July holidays, big boating weekends, you know, the, mm -hmm. the news crews always want to come out and ride and, you know, talk to you about on the water about boating safety and that kind of thing. And be nice if there was that much interest the rest of the summer too, but <laughs> yeah. we're, we're glad we'll take what we can get. But I saw you on a couple of occasions and you did mm -hmm. an excellent job of, of getting the message out and just, you know, very concise way and yeah. you know they don't give you all that much time on tv because you know it's pretty time compressed so you you got a lot of great information out there i just want to tell you thanks for for yeah. all you do out there we're fortunate here in nashville to have some great news media folks yes mm -hmm. they do an awesome job and i work well with them they work well with me and i enjoy doing it i enjoy getting them out there on the boat and they enjoy being out there that's good something a little bit different than being in the in the studio in the office there that, <laughs> right that I get out yeah. um I was just informed uh, before we started the show that you're going to be rep 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 um, I'll get the word out here in a minute. Rec recognized. Recognized, yeah. At the uh, <laughs> Mothers Against Drug Driving Awards banquet this, again this mm -hmm. year for the third year in a row uh, yeah. on your efforts with BUI enforcement. Yeah, it's uh, one of my, that's my biggest passion of my job is uh, our BUI enforcement and our BUI program. You know, uh, I just, you know, um, that's what a lot of our officers' passions are, mm -hmm. keeping the waterway safe and removing those operators that are impaired from our waterways right. so folks that are out there with their families can enjoy our waterways and stay safe. And be safe. Well, congratulations on on uh, a third year in a row recognition. And uh, so is there uh, – what all is involved with that banquet? Uh, it's just a banquet. Uh, they recognize officers from all over the state for their DUI efforts and – uh, our TWA officers for their BUI efforts BUI. and they hand out awards. Okay, awesome, awesome. Well, congratulations on that and uh, and keep up the good work. Anything else you want to fill in? Tell us about yourself. Oh, uh, I went to. I'm a big Vol fan. I went to there UT. You go. I went to UT Knoxville, so I'm a UT uh, grad, majored in wildlife fisheries management. Um, I graduated in 2007, uh, and whenever I graduated, you know, jobs and our careers are very hard to come by. So mm -hmm. uh, I applied to just about every state in the southeast 
the wildlife uh, agencies, and um, I was fortunate. I got hired on with the Alabama Department of Conservation and Natural Resources oh, okay. uh, in 2008 as a conservation officer. All right. So uh, I started off my career as an officer down there uh, in Shelby County, Alabama, which is in the Hoover area. A lot of mm-hmm. people are familiar with the Hoover area, Birmingham. Uh-huh. So I was down there for about uh, three years until I got the chance to you know, move back up here. I'm glad you're glad you're back in Tennessee. I didn't realize you worked down there for a few years. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. That's hey, awesome. speaking of UT, have you ever worked the? Uh, oh, hey, wait a minute. I, I got interrupted there. What's Not that, on purpose. What, what's that, Jason? Uh, that's some new music I found. It's time for TWRA Q and A. Ah, catchy. Yeah, a new little segment we want to try out on you folks uh, watching today. Uh, and I they didn't know you were had another thought, but we'll come oh, back that's to that. All right. That's all right. <laughs> We're trying out this new uh, new idea for uh, a little bit of Q&A time on the Tennessee Wildcast. And today, since we're talking boating, I thought, yeah. why not uh, hit up some uh, boating questions? Perfect. And answer those for the folks at home. So a lot of questions come in um, on boater education classes and how they can get involved in those. And uh, let's just start from the top. Um, how do you find a class? Josh, how do you find a class for for boating? Yep. Folks can go to our uh, website, uh, tnwildlife.org. They can go to the boating uh, division tab, mm-hmm. and there's a place for boat education where they can go on there and uh, find a uh, boat class in their area, in their county, uh, where they can go and take the class. And a lot of these questions can be answered by going to tnwildlife.org. Uh, but So if, if somebody wants to take a class, uh, what's the cost? Is there a cost for the class? They have to have a top 600 permit. Uh, before when they come to take the class that's a ten dollar permit okay uh, that they need to bring with them gotcha and then uh top 600 you said that and how old do you have to be before you can take the class 12 12 years old they got to be at least 12 years old before they can uh, take the uh, boating class and i'm gonna pull up uh for you watching at home just pull up the the website here and show you this is the education page and you can scroll down here and and uh if i can find my cursor yeah, you can scroll down, and, and, and some of these questions that we're, we're asking can be answered right here. Uh, what do you need to be boater education certified? How do I study? And that's uh, uh, you can study online, or you can come to the classes and study, but you still have to buy the permit uh, and uh, to take the test. And sometimes tests are, are given other locations. Where can you take tests most of the time, John? Yeah, uh, if there's not a... If in their county, if there's not a physical uh, place where an officer teaches the class, right. uh, lots of times their local library will offer the class and they can sit and have a monitor test by the librarian at one of the library computers. So okay. uh, that just tries to make it uh, easier for these more rural counties that will have a library with computers where they can go and take uh, that class. The secret is just getting prepared for that one though, isn't it? Correct. Yeah, that one you definitely want to study for. Yeah. Uh, probably get some of the study guides off uh, online, study for a little bit before you go take that one. Yeah. Hey, and, and the boater, boater ed classes are kind of like hunter ed to me in that you know you got a a person in your family that's young enough that needs that that certification to uh, operate a boat and a lot of times the parents will come along too uh just as a family activity and and Mm -hmm. a lot of great information within that even for seasoned what people consider themselves seasoned boaters you know that have been doing it for years but yet there's a lot of the nuances a lot of the the navigational stuff that Mm -hmm. You know, people just never really learned that that uh, yeah. they they can pick up in those classes. Oh yeah, every, every class I teach, I always have a parent come to me and uh-huh. say, "Man, I'm glad I sat through this <laughs> with my child because I didn't know a lot of that material. Yeah, I learned I learned a lot. Yeah, and I'm glad I sat through it. So um, it, it's a great thing, especially you know, lots of times you know adults do bring their kids and they sit through the class with them. So, uh-huh. and that's a great idea for them to go ahead and take the test. I tell them go ahead and take the test and get your Type 600 permit and you get certified also. That's yeah. good. Now, one last question on, on on this: Does it help with your insurance? It, it could. It could possibly help with your insurance. In a lot of cases. In maybe. a lot. Yep. In a lot of cases, uh, depends on your insurance company, but uh, lots of times it will lower your insurance if you provide proof that you've taken a boater safety class. So that's good for those older folks. Oh yeah. That are sitting there watching, you know, in the class with their kids. Mm-hmm. Might as well De- go ahead and take it. Yep. Definitely. Awesome. Well, that's. Uh, I think this is going pretty good. We are getting our money's worth out of this theme music. <laughs> I tell you. What. It is. Oh, it ended. Yeah, oh, that's okay. it. I was say, Man, this is like an album version. Yeah. Of this thing. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is just something we're trying out. Something new, something exciting. Uh, just change it up a little bit. And one other thing that we get, we're getting a lot uh, 
right now as far as questions coming in is how can I comment or how can I put some, give you some input on the waterfowl and migratory bird season setting. So uh, that comment period right now is October 15th through November 30th. Uh, you can uh, go to our uh, email us at twra.huntingcomments at tn.gov or you can mail in your comments uh, to our P.O. Box 40747, Nashville, Tennessee, 37204. And then uh, make sure you uh, specify that's coming to the 2019-2020 hunting season comments. And that'll go to the Wildlife and Forestry Division. So that's one other question that we're getting a lot of uh, uh, these days. So anyway, there's we our... Tr we try to make all that pretty accessible on the on the front page of the uh, yeah. the website as well actually so. on our website you can go to our home page and and uh and find that info uh, right. right there mr lee wilmont has uh wrote a press release and gives you all those details right there yeah that's good get to it so that is our twra q and a there you go all oh, right all right sorry <laughs> sorry for the gap there uh, we need a little theme music to bridge it yeah we, <laughs> you want me to cue that back up we need some girl singers i think doing it. i'm gonna arrange i'm gonna figure something out okay all right so maybe next time we'll have a little bit more uh, a little more uh, vocals in there all right all right let's get back to what we're here for today the boating side of things and uh, we're gonna do a little reflecting on uh, this past summer boating season and uh, talk a little bit of the, about some of the statistics. So, Josh, fill us in a little bit on uh, how the season's gone so far, and and uh, just a little bit of information yeah. on that. Yeah, statewide, it was a it was a fairly uh, busy boating season. Um, we had a few rainy weekends that uh, you know we had slower than normal Slows traffic. It down a little bit. Uh, but other than that, it was still a fairly busy weekend for our officers statewide. Uh, unfortunately, we ended up <clears throat> this summer with uh, twenty three. Um, fatalities uh, so far throughout the summer uh, which is you know obviously w way too many you know mm -hmm. there's never going to be one fatality is way too many right so uh, we did have uh, unfortunately 23 fatalities and we had a uh, 48 serious injury uh, boating accidents um, statewide so uh, you know that's something that we our officers work every day to try to curb you know that's why we're out there right uh, looking for folks who are driving recklessly just trying to prevent some of these uh accidents from happening yep and again i mean our people want everybody to have a good time i mean mm -hmm. that's what boating is all about it's just fun you know and, yeah. and uh, just keeping the waterways safe enough that everybody can really enjoy them mm -hmm. yeah we just hope you know we we put the the message out there to be prepared when you go to the water you know be prepared you know have enough life jackets in your boat um you know be prepared for something to happen because lots of times you know it's the weekends people are you know just getting off work they want to enjoy their weekend mm -hmm. and uh lots of times they'll uh just not think about yeah. what they really need to bring and you know the water is a dangerous can be a very dangerous place mm -hmm. so uh we we try to you know put that message out there for folks to come to the water prepared yeah, maybe pull together a checklist. I don't know if you've ever thought about that or yep. encourage people to do that. Pull pull together a checklist and make sure you got everything before you hit the hit the lake. Or well, when you guys do a safety check, you pull over pull somebody over just for a uh, a step on safety check. What mm -hmm. what what are those requirements? For the, what yeah. are you looking for there? Yeah, whenever we uh, stop a vessel, uh, what we what our officers look for is you know we're looking at the, the registration, making sure. You know, their vessel is up to date on the registration, uh, making sure they have a life jacket that is a good uh, life jacket uh -huh. and it's, you know, doesn't have any holes, tears in it. Right. Uh, they have to have a life jacket for every person that is on the boat, and that life jacket has to fit the people that are on the boat. Uh -huh. So if they have a, um, a small child, you know, obviously child children uh, under 13 have to be wearing that life jacket at all times right and that life jacket has to actually fit that child uh -huh. so uh, we'll be looking for life jackets a fire extinguisher they have to have a workable fire extinguisher and a throw cushion if their boat is 16 feet or over um, those are typically the main things that we are looking for okay and uh you know along with that too uh you know uh, we're always looking for impaired boaters so mm -hmm. you know if we see something where the driver might show some signs of impairment you know we'll address that also and then you speaking of the life jackets there, I was thinking they, they have the inflatables mm -hmm. out these days, and, and those don't work for kids, right? There's, Correct. There's a certain age limit for those. Yep, 16, 16 and over. And uh, uh, they're the only folks that can wear the inflatables. Yeah. 
Um, let's go, let's go back to those uh, those numbers just a little bit, and I, I don't mm-hmm. want to labor too much on fatalities, but there were six on paddlecraft and five involving PwC. Is that is that normal? Are you seeing a lot more with PwC and 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 paddlecraft or? Yeah, that that does seem to be a little bit high for this summer. Um, those the paddlecraft are becoming very popular. The mm-hmm. pa- the stand up uh, paddle boards, um, just recreational kayaking in general is becoming very popular. So. Uh, the main thing on those is wear your life jacket. You know, wear that. I know it's required to be on there, but wear it. You know, if you're yeah. on, if you're on that powder craft, yep. You know, if you're on that kayak in that kayak, wear it, mm-hmm. because lots of times it's unexpected things that happen that right. cause the these accidents. And you're in moving water, nine times out of ten with mm-hmm. those anyway. And you know the the current is moving mm-hmm. your life jacket that's not on you away from you <laughs> yeah yep. the wrong direction so right. if it's I, not on you oh man it's not doing you a bit of good i i took my son uh my son's name is fisher because oh, I, I, like yeah, I like that i like that i took my son fisher uh to the buffalo river this past week on one of my off days oh and uh which he's uh, nine years old so uh-huh. he obviously he was in his life jacket the whole time and i was in my life jacket the whole time. sure and that water buffalo river there's definitely sections of it but mm-hmm. You know, there's trees laying down. You know, yeah. if you hit any one of those objects and you fall in, you know, you don't have long to, to react right. for something to go wrong. So um, wear the life jacket. Yeah. On the paddle craft, or what are the requirements other than maybe a life jacket that you got to have? Is it much different than a regular boat on, on the lake? Uh, not. It's not much different than a regular a kayak or another paddle craft okay. to stand up paddle boards. <laughs> is that what you asked, the stand-up paddle board? Yeah, well, just in general, okay. like for paddle craft, do you have oh. to have more than a life jacket? No, yeah, you just have to have a life jacket for everybody on that boat. If you happen to be out after sunset, you do have to have a means to a white light that you can shine if a boat comes into your area. Okay. So, right. uh, Which I highly recommend um, a headlamp and have that headlamp on at all uh-huh. times. All times, yeah. That's what I recommend. Uh, but the the law does state uh, it just needs to be shined when a boat comes in your area to prevent an accident. Okay. But definitely have that headlamp on at all times because some of these bass boats and bass tournaments at night they're going pretty fast. Right. And those paddle craft are very hard to see, and you know lots of times that reaction time to turn on that light might be just a little bit too late. So uh-huh. make sure you keep that light on at all times. And best we can tell just from looking through the numbers, I've got a note here uh, that Miss Betsy Woods got for us. She's our boating education coordinator that apparently possibly 10 of these could have been prevented if they had been wearing a life jacket, 10 of the fatalities. That's correct. 10 out of the, almost half could have, the, half of those fatalities almost could have been prevented if they were wearing a life jacket. So and uh, that's how important they are. That's pretty much half of half of what happened, oh, half of the mm-hmm. fatalities. So 50% could have been maybe, uh, maybe stopped or prevented. Mm-hmm. And several of those, I mean, many of those were strong swimmers too, mm-hmm. by their own estimation and by others too. Mm-hmm. So it's... You know, just being a, a good swimmer doesn't exempt you from, from mm-hmm. the, the problems. The the fatalities that I've worked uh, over the years, it's amazing to me how many times the story is, oh, he was doing fine, he was a strong swimmer, and he was there one second and then just, just gone disappeared. the next. disappeared, yeah. Mm-hmm. He didn't struggle or they didn't struggle. Or nothing. It's time after time after time that's typically mm-hmm. the story, and it's, it's sad. Mm-hmm. Well, let's uh, let's switch gears and and look at um, what's what's ahead. It's getting cooler, and we're going. You'll be out. People will be out boating, uh, doing some fishing in the cooler times of the mm-hmm. year, looking for hunting spots. What do you? Uh, how do you encourage people or, or uh, educate people in this time of year? Yeah, uh, especially during um, the waterfowl season. You know, getting to your blind. You're a boater before you become a duck hunter. That right. Day. Right. Yeah. So uh, you know, you're still required to have all the proper. Uh, gear, all the proper life jackets, snow cushions, registration. Um, so you're still required to have all that. And during those times of year, the water is super cold. So you need to be prepared for something to go wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, know what to do if you end up in the water. And, uh, you know, that can, that's something that everybody needs to think about before they go out, you know, hunting. Navigational lights, too, because, mm-hmm. you know, yep. the, you're going to be out before the sun comes up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, make sure you check, especially on these duck boats. A lot of them, they don't get out in those boats all year long. So right. make sure you check your lights before you go out that uh-huh. the day. Um, another <coughs> stat that Betsy had passed on was 68 degrees is considered cold water. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's – and that doesn't seem very, very cold when you think about it. But 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, last night, I just happened to be in Houston County at uh, one of their Hunter Ed classes. I was actually taking my kids to the Hunter Ed class oh, last okay. night in Houston County. And one of their instructors is a uh, doctor, and we were talking about hypothermia. And he brought up a point that, uh, you know, the average body temperature is 98.6 degrees. And he said hypothermia kick, starts kicking in and your body temperature going to 95 degrees. So it only takes three degrees of your body temperature wow. dropping of your body temp before hypothermia starts to set in. So that, that's not a lot. Huh. You know, it, hypothermia, you know, is, is a serious deal and can happen quickly. Right. Wow. That's crazy. I never thought about that. Never, never knew that. Um, so any more information that we want to pass on to the duck hunter or the deer hunter getting out there this year and use you know in the water and making their way to their honey hole wear the life jacket you know wear your life jacket to that uh, hunting hole to your duck blind you know once you get to the duck blind take it off um like i said especially if you go in the water that if you end up in the water that life jacket's going to help keep your body warmth inside uh, in you so and they make uh, float coats and things like that too mm, correct yeah. those will those, those will uh, those are really i wear a float coat a lot of times during the winter time when i'm out working yeah and uh those are awesome to have i mm-hmm. mean my and they give you plenty of buoyancy so they're that, they're a great tool that's good that's good and i'm a huge fan of the inflatables you know mm-hmm. when when you don't want to be encumbered by you know the typical life jacket those, yeah. those inflatables you put them on and 30 seconds later, you totally forget you have it on. Yep, yep. And, you know, that brings up a good point, fishermen. Um, you know, the majority of the time that if in our fatalities where a fisherman drowns, it's not when the big motor's on. You know, lots of times it's, you know, while they're fishing. Standing up. Yep, they end up in the water somehow. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of times in our fatality accidents where uh, it's a fisherman. Yeah. And they mm-hmm. weren't wearing their life jacket. And that's where those... Um, inflatables could come in real handy. And I know Betsy really has a heart for the 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 fishermen, especially. She she sort of describes that demographic, you know, of of mm-hmm. uh, you know, forty and above guys out fishing, either by themselves or maybe with one other mm-hmm. guy. And you know, typically you're you're standing up, you're you're using a trolling motor, and but like you said, it's just so easy. I mean, you you hit a an errant stump, a little. A little knock and you lose your balance and you're in the water before you know it. Mm-hmm. Yep. I worked a uh, fatal accident. It was probably three years ago, where it was a fisherman that fell off his boat and drowned. And I could see evidence on the boat where he had attempted to get back into the boat, but yeah. he just couldn't. And the cold water, uh, he you know succumbed to the cold water because it was during the winter time. Yeah. So uh, you know that life jacket will will save lives. It mm-hmm. definitely saves lives. It seems like we keep coming back to that. Every t- you know, it, wear your life jacket. Whether you're a hunter, a mm-hmm. fisherman, uh, whatever you're doing on the water, if you're just out there having fun, life jacket. That's can't say it enough. Yeah, yep. they float, you don't. That's what we titled the show. They float, you don't. So All right. <laughs> uh, let's uh, just keep reminding people. Um, anything else you want to hit on boating wise? I, I, I kind of wanted to, to ask your opinion or your thoughts on becoming a wildlife officer or a boating officer. If you want to encourage people to to do that and how you do that but anything else on boating before we go that uh, route you know one statistic that uh, we had down here we did have 75 buis across the state okay uh this year and you know like i said earlier that's uh, one of our agency's big uh passions is right. to get those impaired boaters off the waterway so um you know if you we want people to have fun uh you know just make sure you take a designated driver out there with you so we can get that number even lower next year gotcha hey before the theme music came on and I was in the middle yeah, of asking the question. Yeah, you had a question. question. <laughs> okay, we were talking about UT. We were talking oh, yeah. about talking about the water, and uh, the Vol Navy came to mind. I was wondering, have you ever worked the uh, the Vol Navy detail? I have there? not had a chance to go out oh, there and man. work. I've been invited, and I've just not been able to make it happen. Not been able to make it happen. So. Yeah, big Vols I, I want man. To. You need to oh, do. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a big Vol game, UT game this week, too, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> UT and Alabama, I, I, go Vols. Yeah, go Vols, but <laughs> they're struggling right now. Um, so let's talk about uh, becoming an officer or a boating mm-hmm. officer, either one. Well, how would you encourage folks, what would you encourage them to do if they're interested in becoming an outdoor or becoming a wildlife officer or, or a boating officer? Yeah, uh, I would definitely encourage them to go to college, uh, first off. And um, like I said, I went to UT. Uh, there's numerous uh, universities in the state of Tennessee that offer 
a program such as uh, wildlife and fisheries management. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I encourage them to go take those classes uh, while you're in college. Uh, what you know, I think really helped me on my resume was when I was in college. I really done everything, every volunteer opportunity I could take, something that I could put on that resume. Whenever I graduated, that's what I done every mm-hmm. summer. You know, I didn't go work at uh, McDonald's or Walmart. I went and I tried to find an internship or a job that was wildlife related. And you mentioned it earlier that the competition is stiff. It you is. Know, not only in Tennessee, but, it, you know, the southeast and, and around the country mm-hmm. for, for this line of work. So uh, kudos to you for for putting in the time and, and mm-hmm. getting the degree and, and you know, having the stick to to yeah. hang in there and, and uh, earn the earn the job it's um it's, it's really good what uh ut martin is is mm-hmm. another another school in tennessee the, in tech the state. tennessee tech ut martin and uh ut knoxville and the so degrees that you need to even be considered to to uh to interview for the for the wildlife mm-hmm. position uh fisheries you mentioned it mm-hmm. uh wildlife mm-hmm. uh natural resources management yeah forestry mm-hmm. um uh, am I missing? I, that's there's. I guess there's probably quite a few op to op, you know po- possibilities or ways to go. Forestry, you said that. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, there's a lot of you opportunities. Could, you could have a biology degree, but you still have to have a certain number of wildlife related classes right. or credits yeah. to go along with that biology degree. Yeah. Well, we're going to run out of time, and and uh, I wanted to highlight this real quick before we do um, the boat show. It's kind of the kickoff for, for boating education season. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's in Jan- in January, January 11th. Uh, we'll have the first boating class of the year at the boat show. And that's, on 530, that's at 530 on a Friday. And uh, it's at the Music City Center. And if you buy a ticket, the the uh, top 600 for 10 bucks, go take the test. That gets you into the, to the convention. For free. Yeah. So yeah. you can go check out the boats and see if you want to buy something. And we're going to be pre-selling hunting and fishing license and renewing boats and uh, registering new boats. So all I was that's at, gonna be happening. I was asking Betsy about that. I said you could go there, you know, with just your pass, and if you see something you like, you could buy a boat right there yeah. off the floor. You could go, uh, you know, not only have your education in your pocket, but you could uh, also register that new boat right there on yeah. site. That's register neat. And, and get your hunting and fishing license yeah. while you're at it. Yeah. yeah. We'll have officers there, and they can answer at, we'll answer all the questions they have. So. Wow. That's a one-stop shop. Yeah, you guys always have a good contingent there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we usually have a lot of people stop by. Yeah. So, Well, Josh, I appreciate you coming and being well, with us today. And you're welcome. A lot of good information, and I uh, hope uh, everyone watching and listening enjoyed the show, and uh, we'll see you all next time. Tennessee Wildcast. Thanks, Don. Keep up uh, the great work out there, Josh. Thank you. Thank y'all. All All right. We'll see y'all next time. Thanks for tuning in. Stay connected with TWRA by visiting our website at tnwildlife.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hey, it's all about Tennessee wildlife. It's what we do. Tennessee Wildcast will be on the air again next week. We'll see you then.